Welcome to Warmaster Podcast, episode 28 of Adventures in 3D Printing. Well, this doesn't look like resin printing, does it? I know you'd be right, this is not resin printing. This is, um, what do they call it, FDM or uh, PLA-based, so basically plastic printing. Uh, I bought a, a Anycubic Mega Zero on a Black Friday deal with some Re, uh, with some, I've got, I've got to sort of call it resin, with some plastic, like a, a kilogram of plastic PLA uh, from any cubic. And it was it was only £100 for the printer and the, uh, the, the roll of PLA. But in true Black Friday style, they were out of stock. And not only were they out of stock, after a month, they finally admitted they weren't ever going to make any more stock. So I'm not actually sure how they ever planned to fulfill my order, seeing that I was chasing them for a month, or more than a month, uh, before they finally admitted they were never actually going to make any more Mega Zeros. And uh, therefore, they were just sitting on my money. So the only solutions they offered were, after I pushed them, were a refund... Uh, or alternatively, they were offering me a Mega Zero 2.0 for $50 extra, um, which is about £35 or something like that. Um, now, the Mega Zero is an entry-level copy of a, an Ender, uh, an Ender printer, I think that's the name of the brand. And... They're basically clones, if we're being honest. They've just um, reverse engineered the design and, and built their own copy. Um, so it's an entry level printer. And the difference between the Mega and the two, Mega Zero 2.0, the Mega Zero has, um, it doesn't have a printed, he, a heated print bed and it doesn't have a flex plate. And that's it. The difference, uh, so you're paying your extra $50, you get a heated plate, which means you can use more materials. It also means that the PLA adheres a bit better and it tends not to curl up and stuff. Uh, so you, your, your prints don't fail as often. And the flex plate means you don't have to work so hard to get the stuff, which sticks quite well, I've got to be honest. It sticks quite well onto the plate. Um, so you're not uh, on the Mega Zero. You're using a glass plate, and on this one, you're using a magnetic flex plate. So you just, at the end of your print, you pull the flex plate off, and then you bend it, and this just pops straight off. So that is a big bonus. Is it worth fifty dollars or thirty-five pounds? Well, I didn't do it originally, but with hindsight, I probably would have done it anyway. So I don't feel hard done by, uh, even though I had to pay some in the end. I tried to haggle to get um, to get less. Uh, less it, for it to cost less money to, for the upgrade, but they weren't have, but they weren't biting. I guess they're in a relatively strong position. I would say that any Cubics customer service is close to atrocious. Um, so if you are not competent at enforcing your legal rights and being persistent, and and you're not uh, tech savvy. I would probably recommend not using any cubic. <laughs> but if you're able to kind of find your way around things, uh, I had to build, oh, another, I will talk about it at some point, I did have to build the machine from scratch. But this one, another bonus was, this was semi-modular, whereas the, the Mega Zero, the original one, was not modular, and you had to build a lot of stuff, where this one was modular, so it was... It maybe took me an 40 minutes to an hour, and there was only a couple of problem issues. I did have to find a, make my own solution to one issue, which maybe, again, I'll talk about on, on another video. I, there was no uh, advice. And, there's, again, when you're using the slicing software, there was no profile for the Mega Zero 2. So you have to kind of cobble one together. Anyway, so what quality can you expect from this absolutely dirt-cheap printer? Um... This is printed at 0.3, which is the draft settings. And as you can see, this is quite blocky. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's said for draft. I, I guess if you were printing something off and just wanted to check it worked, or if it wasn't going to be something you were ever going to use, you could print at this. But I'm not interested. I, 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 can't, I can't stomach this. This is way too blocky, blobby. 
where the lines are way too big. And with it being PLA, there's no way of um, using any kind of vapor treatment to get these lines away, which you can do with uh, with, with the ABS or whatever the kind of the, the, the other type of plastic that you can use. Um, so that's point the the standard normal setting is this one point two and this is the one that I've done most of my printing at. You can still see lines. Um, it would be silly to suggest otherwise, but it's something I can cope with, I think, and I will show you something I've printed and painted. Oh, I need to say, these little walls with the little pins that connect together uh, were sent courtesy of Cromity Forge. Uh, he sells these on his Centimeter Warrior website, uh, and you can pick up a set of walls. There are absolutely millions of different types of walls. Oh, you can actually see them together. That's interesting, isn't it? So that's uh, three, and this is two, and I'll put the, the fine quality on. So you can pick yourself a, a set of walls up for not very much money at all. And there are absolutely tons of different walls and different different corners and T-junctions and bloody bits of walls missing and uh, the unbelievable amount. And then we can put the... This is so. This is the medium quality, which I've done the vast majority of the printing on, and this, on the end here, is the high quality point one. Oh, you can definitely see the difference. So, if I was doing something that I wanted to look really nice, I could print it at this point one, which is the point one of a millimeter layer height. So, ten layers per millimeter, five layers per millimeter, and this one here on the end is three and a third layers per millimeter so three and a third five and ten I think your bang for your buck is probably the five because the prints still take a reasonable amount of time this is still I don't know maybe a 45 minute print something like that it would be obviously longer here um, and it would obviously take quite a lot more uh, does it take more PLA I'm sure it must take more PLA I'll have to do some research on that or may, I don't know whether it would or wouldn't take more PLA, but it would definitely take more time. But you could get, I think that's quite a reasonable finish. I can't see that many layer lines on it. You can't, you certainly can't see layer lines to the degree of this, and certainly not to the degree of this. Um, so that that's interesting. I'll have to do some more, some more prints with the point one and talk to John at Cromity Forge because he has a much more expensive printer, like. Maybe four times, uh, three or four times as expensive as this. A creative, I think that's the name, CR10 or something he was telling me. Um, and it may be about speed as well as um, output resolution. So, uh, so yeah, so you've got high quality, medium quality, draft quality. I've also got to be honest and say that, as, as I've mentioned briefly, there was no profile, so I had to jimmy... A profile together so it may be you can uh, you can adapt the settings a little bit and get better output than this just finishing off this is something that I've printed quite a lot of it's my first test paint uh, and also uh, yeah so I've printed um, using the medium settings it takes about an hour something like that I then undercoated white so the only real problem is the blobbiness on the top, but undercoated white with a spray and then hit it with Vallejo sepia, like, like dipping formula, which is like a plasticky army painter dip that you, in the old dipping technique. So it's sticky, it's water-based though, and then I've just um, put some grass around the base. And I'm gonna do loads of these for my bolt action games. So uh, they're not brilliant. But I think they're passable, and most people, when they're interested in playing uh, like games, that they, they don't want to, that you don't want to spend hours and hours on terrain. You just want usable painted terrain, and I think these uh, are only going to take about well, they take an hour to print, and they take about ten minutes to paint, and that, that's what you want. Um, so I thought I'd show you at the end of this uh, what what kind of output you can get from the median settings. Thanks for um, watching this episode and um, next one we'll be dealing with some forest dragon prints in the old resin.